I've got the Intel MacBook Pro here from 2019, one of the last Intel MacBooks made, and I've got a brand new M3 Max MacBook Pro right here, and we're gonna set up Windows, but there's a couple of things to know about this. On the Intel machines, you can set up something called Boot Camp. It comes with the operating system, and it allows you to boot into Windows. Now, it only supported up to Windows 10. Windows 11 is not fully supported. On the Apple Silicon Macs, starting from M1 all the way up to now, you can use Parallels, which has a partnership with Microsoft to get Windows going on your machine, and it's gonna be Windows 11. There's a couple of other differences I wanna discuss with you, and we're gonna run some tests, because that's what we do here. So this is like a two for one video. If you wanna skip the installations and go right to the tests, I'll leave a chapter marker in the description. On the Intel MacBook Pro, I'm gonna open up something called Boot Camp Assistant. Make sure you back up your system, because what you're gonna be doing is dividing the hard drive up into two spaces, two partitions. Right now, it's all one big chunk, but we're gonna divide it up. This assistant is what allows you to do that. You can drag this little divider and indicate how much you want in your Windows partition to have. And whatever you have there is gonna be taken away from the Mac OS partition. So you probably don't wanna give too much away to the Windows partition. I'm gonna allocate 90 gigabytes. Then you need to also indicate where is Windows installation media. I'm using an ISO file is the image that contains Windows. You can also use a thumb drive with Windows on it, but I'm using the ISO file, which I've downloaded from the Microsoft website. And let's click install. It says your computer computer isn't connected to a power source. I know, uh, you should probably be connected, but I'm gonna continue on battery power, and hopefully, hopefully this Intel machine will still have some battery left after this is done. I'm getting a scary message here. It says, your Mac will stop responding while resizing the startup volume. This may take several minutes or hours. Hours? Please do not quit Boot Camp Assistant, power off the computer, or restart until the operation is complete. Maybe I should plug it in. Come on, it's not gonna take that long, right? Copying Windows files. Okay, seeing some progress. Good. So I started this about, uh, let's say three minutes ago. It's 10.19 a.m. right now. Let's see when it finishes. It says, there are users sharing this computer. If you restart, they will be disconnected. Let's restart. I don't know who is, who's on my computer. Are you guys, are you hacking me? Better not be. Got my eye on you. So that message was because I actually connected from my other machine to copy over the ISO file and it was still connected. You probably won't get that message. Yeah, Windows setup. This is the old Windows setup with Windows 10. Let's do Windows 10 Pro. Now I downloaded the X64 Insider's Edition ISO, which gives me an option to select which edition of Windows 10 I wanna install. Depending on the ISO you get, you might get those options, you might not. But what's important to know is that this is an X64 ISO, which means that this is a 64-bit version of Windows that's supported or Intel base machines. This is not supported on Apple Silicon. So while Windows is setting up, let's turn our attention to this machine and set up Windows on this machine. This is going to be a little different because we're using Parallels, like I mentioned. Parallels is a paid program. It's not free. There's a link down below that you can use. It's an affiliate link. If you buy Parallels through that link, it helps my channel out, but it doesn't cost you anything. If there is a coupon, I'll actually put the coupon in the comment or in the description. Now, there are a few key differences that I'll go over between between these two setups. One of them is I already have Windows on there and I'm just gonna install another one. In fact, I can have many copies of Windows. I can change their configurations. I can change the allotment of how much RAM they have, how much CPU cores they get allocated, hardware configurations for different Windows machines. I can set up Linux. Well, here, let's create a new machine here. This is the installation assistant that comes with Parallels. And you can see we have Linux, Fedora, Debian, Kali. We can even install another copy of Mac OS, a virtual Mac OS. But since Microsoft officially has a partnership with Parallels to allow Windows installations directly, they have this cool new button now that says get Windows 11 from Microsoft. So I'm gonna push that button and click continue. And that's it. All I need to do is click install Windows. It's doing it right now. The file size is 5.24 gigabytes. So it needs to download all that. Luckily I have fast internet here. It's about the same size as the ISO file for Windows 10 that I used on this other machine. So the current status is the Intel machine is getting ready. It completed setup, I believe. And this one is still downloading Windows 11 installation file with less than a minute remaining. Now we're dealing with vastly different hardware here. I'm actually expecting the new machine to be faster anyway. 
let's see if my expectation comes true. What do you think is going to happen? Leave a comment down below. Okay, here we got Windows starting up. This is going to be the setup and setup is starting. Now, by the way, if you have Windows already as a machine, you don't need to reinstall Windows again. You can just clone an existing machine. You can also take snapshots of your machine state, which means that uh, if you go and do something dangerous or you want to try something out or install a piece of software that you're not so sure about, you just take a snapshot, go do your thing with the Windows machine, and you can always revert back to the snapshot and be back where you were just a few minutes ago or a few days or whatever. You can take multiple snapshots. When Windows is installed on hardware like we have here on the Intel machine, you won't be able to do that. You only have one copy of Windows, and if you mess it up, you mess it up. You have to reinstall it. All right, this one is saying just a moment. It's getting ready. This one looks like it finished setup, and we're going to restart now. Now, as I mentioned, I've never used Boot Camp before because I prefer the virtualized method myself. And up until Apple Silicon came out, I've been using VMware Fusion since 2013. At that time, VMware was a better product and I was pretty happy using Windows on that. I actually made a video on why I did that for my development needs. I'll link to that video down below if you want to check it out. But when Apple Silicon came out, VMware Fusion didn't act in time and Parallels became the dominant force behind virtualization of Windows on Apple Silicon and they still are. Looks like uh, the Intel one is a little bit ahead here. Now we have some important setup to do. You do your setup, Intel box. Sit back and relax. No, we don't sit back and relax. Okay, this one says installation complete. Accept the agreement. Windows 11 installed successfully. And I'm on the desktop. Now there's some updates that need to be done, but it's Windows, totally understandable. I'm gonna be updating this thing for days, but we're here. I'm on the desktop. I can start using things like Edge to download Chrome. Just kidding, Edge is good now. I just hate all these questions in the beginning. Oh my gosh. Okay. This one is restarting. I don't know what it's doing. It's getting there. Google Chrome. Here we go. Download Chrome. Now, a note about this is any software that you're going to be downloading on this Windows for ARM here, make sure that it's Windows for ARM compatible. Right now it says for Windows 11 10 64 bit, you don't know if that's the ARM version or if that's the x64 version. If you go down here all the way to the bottom, you'll be able to download other versions of Chrome, but I don't believe that there is an ARM version of Chrome right now for Windows. There is an ARM version of Chrome for everything else, but just not Windows. And that's one of the things that you want to keep in mind. If you're doing development, let's say on Notepad, VS Code, Visual Studio, and you need Windows for that, this is going to work perfectly. I have many videos Video showcasing the performance of that. If you need other software that's not available for Windows for ARM specifically, you're going to be in big trouble. And that's why solutions like this still exist. It's much clunkier. It's much slower. You don't get Windows 11 fully supported. You're still stuck on Windows 10, but your x64 software, custom software, IDEs, whatever you're using is going to work fine on this. So let's do setup for personal use. Still not done with the setup here. Go with an offline account, sign in. Now, to be fair, this is being set up kind of like brand new machine setup. Whereas here, all the network configuration, your account setup, all that, you didn't have to do any of that because it's done for you. Here you have security questions and answers, but I'm still curious about performance of this Windows machine using bootcamp. So I'm going to continue. Come on, just give me a desktop. We're still getting things ready for you. This might take several minutes. I wonder how much battery is left. For those of you that are counting, it's now been over 20 minutes. Now, if you're using Visual Studio Code, probably the only tool that I found that actually breaks down their download page like this, Windows, Linux, Mac, and you can choose whether you want a system installer, a user installer, X64 or ARM64 or the CLI or a zip file. They give you everything you may need. I like that. All tools should have that right front and center. I know it's, it looks a little more complicated, but you should have the option to download any version that you want. We're going to, of course, get the ARM64 installer. We'll be back to that in a bit. And Visual Studio Code is now installed. There it is. Now, of course, here I can also go full screen so that I'm completely immersed in my Windows experience. But I can also just with a gesture go back to my Mac environment. And here, if you want to go back to Mac, you need to actually reboot your machine. Welcome to Bootcamp Installer. You need to accept Bootcamp terms. It's installing Bootcamp tools inside Windows. Well, we're doing another reboot. Okay, I think this might be the last one. Um, what's my password? I can't tell you. It's password. I mean, it's Pretty easy. 
it's now 1046 and there's only 41% of battery remaining. I'm gonna start Edge. Edge is working pretty snappy. Let's go to a VS Code, download. And we need the X64 version for the Windows that's running on the Intel machine. VS Code installed. I'm gonna install Visual Studio also so we can see the behavior of that tool as well. But first, I just want to see the startup speed of VS Code and how quickly it starts up. Let's go. I think it started faster on this machine, the uh, Apple Silicon machine, but not much faster. No, not too much faster. Be curious to see how Visual Studio starts up. Let's download it. With Visual Studio 2022 installed, the ARM version here, the x64 version here, I'm going to kick them off and see which one starts first. Ready, set, go. Hmm. Okay, that one's done. This one's still starting up. That one's ready to, yeah, it's, it's available. I can create a new project. This one is still starting up. Let's try that again. I just wanna make sure we have a clean palette. Visual Studio 2022, let's go. All right, that one started. Available for me to create projects. This one started much faster this time around, but still not as fast as this one. How about creating a new project? Let's go with Blazor Web App. Next, take the defaults, .NET 8 LTS, long-term support. All the settings are exactly the same. And let's go. All right, let's see. We're waiting for the interface of Visual Studio to pop up with a brand new project. And this one's done. This one is creating the project. This one is ready to go and I can start editing things. Okay, this one's done now too. Clearly this virtual version is much faster than this X64 version that's running natively. But let's take a look at the task manager here and here. What's going on with this performance here? Ah, we have 32 gigabytes of memory available to the raw machine here on the Intel machine because there is no host Mac OS running. We are running directly on the hardware. So all 32 gigabytes that are on the machine are available for Windows. Here, we only have eight gigabytes available. I can set that to 16, I can set that to 32 because there's a total of 64 gigabytes available on this machine. I can allocate different memory amounts to Windows here. And if I have two instances of Windows running at the same time, I can give four gigabytes to one of them, eight gigabytes to another one. So right now we're giving eight to this one. As far as CPU goes, here we have eight cores on the Intel machine and we have four virtual processors on the Apple Silicon machine. Now, what if I wanted to get a file from my Mac machine to my Windows machine? Well, on this machine, I can't really do that. I would need to reboot into Mac OS, copy that file on some media, like an external thumb drive, reboot the machine again to get into Windows and then copy that media back from the thumb drive to Windows. Here, I can just drag a file over right from my host machine and swipe between Mac OS and Windows. Look, I'm not trying to sell this. Uh, it just happens to sell itself because it's way more convenient, I think. Another thing you can do here is just share a drive. So if you go to File Explorer, right there, it's already mapped for you. In Windows, you can go to Home on Mac, get access to all your files. You can go to iCloud on Mac, get access to all my files. I can also run my Mac applications side by side with my Windows applications. For example, if I'm using Visual Studio on virtual windows and I'm using another service that's running on the Mac, they can talk to each other. One example of that is if you're developing an iOS app and you're using Maui, for example, in Visual Studio, you have one machine, you can just use the iOS simulator and connect to that from Windows to your Mac instance instead of having two separate machines. So if I only had this machine, which is actually pretty warm right now, I would need a separate Mac to build my iOS apps or to connect to remotely for doing uh, cross-platform development with Maui. What's the temperature here? 31 degrees on the Apple Silicon machine. Here we got 39 degrees on this machine. There's one more thing I wanna do is get back into Mac OS on this machine. Let's see what the process is because I've never done this before. So I'm gonna restart and I think I need to press the option key in order to do that. I didn't make it. Nope, too slow. Now I gotta wait for Windows to boot. Let's, let's do that again, restart. I'm just gonna continually push it until I get something. No, why is it going into Windows? Maybe I'd need to power off instead of restart. Let me just force shut it down. I also wonder if the machine is completely shut down, is it gonna give me the option to boot into macOS or Windows 
No, it looks like it's just going into Windows. I hope I didn't lose Mac OS in this process. Press and hold the option during startup. Okay, pressing and holding. Nope, still in Windows. What's going on? It's been an hour and I've been messing around with this thing. Come on. Okay, wow, uh, that was not easy, but I finally got this message to pop up by pressing the option key during startup. So now I can do Macintosh HD or Windows. I'm gonna select Macintosh HD to see if we can get back into Mac OS. Looks like it's starting up. Ah, uh, it's taking its time. Do, 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 do. I'm in Windows. Boom, Visual Studio. Boom, Microsoft Store, and I'm back on the Mac over here. This one is still booting. You wanna start up another instance of Windows? Sure, let's try that. Now I've got two instances of Windows running over here. This one, and this one. This is my old one. I already have the development environment set up on that one. This one has a slightly different version of Visual Studio. It's got the preview version. Popped right up. We got the Mandelbrot test here. If you wanna check out my performance tests of virtual versus native, check this video out right over here. This one is still booting up. I'm gonna wait, but you don't have to. I'll see you in the next one.